Well, starting with the um, materials, tools, how all the place will be organized. Uh, let's start with the working surface and I'll show you what I do. It's very simple. So basically, oh, you can see the, that is the glass. Uh, it's actually, I think it's a glass shelf from some, um, what is it called? Like a cupboard or whatever. So, uh, uh, obviously we need something waterproof and at the same time, maybe not as uh, fragile. Uh, plexiglass will do, a plastic, mm, a timber, mm, not so, but uh, as I said, something sturdy, uh, heavy because it's kind of uh, to stop it from accidentally you know moving and um, also very important uh, that surface supposed to be placed under some angle so I have in my case a tiny towel rolled and placed under top uh, end of the uh, glass so it kind of tilted this way so uh, for today's work I have very light stock of 100% um, cotton uh, cold pressed uh, Fabriano Artistico Italian manufacturer not like fantastic paper but uh, for this uh, work will do not the worst one to be honest I very often using it like for um, my mm, lesson sessions and so on. Uh, I'm gonna secure it with the help of masking tape. Masking tape, um, choice of masking tape is not critical. The only thing is uh, you need to look at if you say if you're going to shop to buy it, go to a local paint shop you know, like where the uh, household paint sold and ask them for a painter's masking tape, uh, low tuck. So that is not as sticky uh, as it might be. So that will prevent any um, damage uh, to your paper when you're gonna remove it. And I'm gonna fix it along all four edges so like that so we, we don't uh, this procedure is supposed to be done like directly before you start uh, painting drawing there is no need to do it like uh, hours before because that low tack masking tape tend to lift after some period of time so we need to make sure it's not happening while we're painting so that is our uh, art board is prepared uh, regarding the size it's a um, um, quarter of standard um, watercolor sheet the big one I usually cut them in four pieces uh, it kind of close to A3 size, but slightly um, smaller. What I always do, I trim the edge of it, short edge, to get these uh, couple of scrap pieces for uh, testing my paint, mm -hmm. for uh, mixing colors or matching colors. So this is the first thing we need. Then pencils. Mm, uh, normally I work with uh, HB pencil and always with this I'll do uh, basic sketch. Then details done with mechanical, pen mechanical pencil uh, 0 0.5 or 0 0.3 also HB thickness, right? Uh, eraser. For watercolor paper I would recommend something that called putty eraser or kneadable eraser uh, something like this it looks like that what what it does essentially it um, 
uh, will not allow to um, uh, appear loads of flakes when you erasing your lanes. It's all gathered in there. There's always uh, some sort of um, carry box like this. This one for, from Faber Castell, very cheap one. Uh, I think it cost me a euro or something. Some of them quite expensive, but to be honest, I can't see the difference in them. So I, to buy these, I go to a local um, um, store that uh, sells uh, stuff for school, uh, all the stationery, office supply. So they should, should have them something like that, reasonably um, priced. Of course, of course, I always uh, if I work with the reference picture, uh, I usually uh, make a photograph, just print it in local print, uh, Photoshop. It's a photographic paper, as you can see, because the quality normally is higher and all, also it's um, better for storage. It's kind of uh, lasts longer. You know, if if you print it on a standard uh, printer paper, you know, like with the uh, um, ink pay, uh, printer, uh, unlikely it will last, you know. So these references, I always keep them for a future. And when I need it, I can go back to them. Okay, so the, uh, extra um, small piece of paper i will be doodling here explaining how to uh, do something okay then always a uh, few uh, tissues uh, these are kitchen towels to wipe brushes we will see how it works and absolutely essential thing every artist must have is your own uh, color well so it's not uh, bought from you know from the shop because it's absolutely useless if you buy it uh, it does not represent the paints that you're actually using here are uh, actual colors that they use arranged in the proper way as it's supposed to be it represents my palette right here all these paints there which means when I trying to match the color, say I would like to, it's just a quick glimpse of what's going to happen in the future. When I find need to find this color, I need a reference point, and my reference point is here. And if that would be some, I don't know, color from somewhere, not yours, like printed and bought from Amazon, for instance, you know, uh, how would you know what? what actual paint to use. I know because like if I see, I can pick the closest, which is that one. Okay, and then start to manipulate with this and bring it to the exact match. We will be doing that all the time with the every subject and I will explain how it works. You will see. Uh, most of you will be surprised how uh, good it works. Now, next, of course, paints. Paints, these paints, uh, I have developed this palette for my students uh, back in years when I was teaching in the school, in art school. Uh, I don't do that anymore, only online uh, at this moment. But uh, back in time, my students needed something uh, ultimate, you know, easy and also that each student would have similar. So that's the palette. And to be honest, I always using that palette for every work. And that is actually an extra proof that this works fine. So as I said, this palette matches the um, color wheel. Paints here, uh, all of them by uh, Japanese manufacturer Halbain. That there are my favorite, all, only using them, nothing else. Uh, all professional ones, uh, most of them, 90% are single pigmented, which is uh, absolutely necessary for successful uh, uh, color creating and, you know, all the painting process supposed to be done properly with this. 
no. And uh, brushes. Uh, brushes, uh, I think I will manage today with these three. Uh, all of them synthetic, different manufacturers, but I will explain which one is which. This one is by also, you will hear from me a lot word Japanese because all of my stuff from Japan. Namura, uh, Tokyo, uh, imitation sable, very nice brush for the larger areas. And details will be done with these two uh, babies, uh, but Art Age, also Japanese company, number six and number eight, uh, Camron Pro. It says Camlon, <laughs> Uh, maybe it's come long. Anyway, so that's the rough size. They all round, no specific shapes. Uh, it's just this one is a little bit tinier than for little small details. Of course, I have a container uh, with water. It's a big one like this uh, with the three sections. Mm -hmm. Very handy one. Also, um, I have this brush. Uh, you can recognize it's very cheap, two inch brush. I use it for sweeping if any flakes or dust on my surface, I will clean it with this brush. Okay, so that is for the starters. I think I have um, sp spoken about everything that we're going to be using today. And uh, let's uh, switch to drawing or painting then.